much, Ben. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today, uh, not just because I'm excited to meet Ben Mulroney too, uh, but because I have to tell you, it makes my heart just sore to see young people here uh, who, who want to come out and make a statement about the, uh, the how much we value freedom. And I want to, as much as excited as you are not to be in school, I, I want to actually compliment um, the teachers that brought you here today because they clearly understand how important and significant this event is and so to them um, I just want I just want to uh, give, give uh, a tip of my hat what we're doing right now is historic and that may sound like a bit much to say because after all what are we doing that is so special we're just standing here or sitting on the lawn in front of the Ontario legislature listening to some people give some speeches and we're, we're speaking our minds. And in Toronto, in Canada, in 2010, people do things like this all the time. But it hasn't always been like that. The freedom to gather where we want, to say what we want, to vote for or against the people in this building, have them serve us, this is, in the sweep of history, very unusual. History is long, and the life of us is so short that it's easy to lose perspective. We take for granted the idea that the freedom we enjoy is permanent, that this is the normal state of affairs for civilization. In reality, in the history of human experience, freedom has almost never existed. History is full of immense and powerful civilizations, ones that endured for centuries, that never even contemplated anything like giving their citizens basic freedoms. In the 3,000 year reign of the pharaohs in Egypt, that grand civilization, the one that first developed astronomy and medicine, there was not even a word for freedom. That's how alien this concept was to them. In the Chinese dynasties, in the African tribal kingdoms, the Mayans, the Aztecs, for thousands of years, humans have been enslaved by a handful of supposedly divine rulers. Even in ancient Rome and Greece, the birthplaces of democracy, freedom was reserved only for certain people. The rest were slaves. In fact, for most of history, anywhere you were born in the world, the odds were good you would end up as somebody's slave. And if you weren't a slave, you were conscripted against your will into brutal wars fought for reasons known only to your chief. And if you weren't fighting, you were doomed to a miserable life without any chance of upward mobility. You would never be more than what your birth had decreed for you. You could be the smartest, smartest most talented person in the world. It wouldn't matter. You could have the greatest ideas for ways of helping humanity. It wouldn't matter. You were allowed to do nothing but obey the rulers who told you what to do and when to do it and where to live. This was the natural order of things. And this isn't just the way history was, it is the way that much of the world still is today. If you go from ancient Egypt to the Middle East today with its Arabian kings and autocrats, where women are prohibited from driving cars or from being seen in public without dressing a certain way, where simply complaining about the government can get you thrown in prison or tortured or killed. Or look at Afghanistan, where our soldiers are fighting for the basic right of girls to go to school. Fast forward from the Mongol dynasties to China today, where practicing your religion can get you sentenced to a work camp. Think of Iran, where children younger than you are executed by the government. Or North Korea, where citizens are starved and their lives controlled in the mi most minute ways by a madman. And we need only go back a little ways in Europe to find people subjected to enslavement by their government, as in the Soviet Union. Or worse, rounded up for being undesirable and murdered, as happened to millions of Jews in Nazi Europe. If you're young, and most of you are, it may seem like these things happened long ago, but they didn't. People my age remember the imprisonment of Eastern Europe by the Soviets, and people your grandparents' age witnessed the slaughter of the Jews by the Nazis. And right now, in 2010, we are all witness 
to the cruelty of tyrannical regimes against innocent people who did nothing but find themselves born in unlucky places in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, instead of being lucky enough to be born in Canada. So how did we get so lucky? How did we Canadians get the privilege of going to sleep every night without worrying whether someone powerful will decide tomorrow to do us harm? Well, it's not just luck. People fought for this. Soldiers have fought wars. Soldiers have died to defend this ideal of freedom against the forces that would put a stop to it. But fighting freedom isn't just for soldiers. All of us can do it, using the media, the courts, the ballot box, by attending events like this one today to make sure we keep our freedom. You see, and everyone's going to quote Simon Wiesenthal's famous quote, freedom is not a gift from heaven. You have to fight for it every day of your life. Each one of us must be part of this fight because the moment we stop being on guard for our freedoms is the moment that the momentum of history takes over and the tradition of oppression triumphs. It sounds hard to believe. All this freedom we have seems so natural, so automatic, but it's not. We need only to look at how things have been throughout history and how they remain in so many parts of the world to understand that some people will always try to overpower others. All of what we have here can be lost, and that means we all have a job to do. When we see injustice, we have to say something. We have to speak out. We have to fight it. When we see someone's rights at risk, even if we ourselves feel safe and we don't know or don't care about whoever's being threatened, we have to speak loudly. We have to defend their rights. If we don't guard the rights of others, others will not guard our rights. I'm not going to stand here and tell you which struggles you should get behind, whether it's women's rights or gay rights or religious rights or free speech. I will tell you that somewhere right now there is a debate going on, a battle being fought that will mean something to you. And I will tell you that you must find that struggle and you must join it. Find injustice. Do not wait for injustice to find you. Give a bit of yourself to someone else's struggle for freedom. Give at least some of your energy, some of the privilege you have been blessed with towards something bigger. If you think about it, you'll realize that more than anything else, our freedom is a gift worth fighting for. Thank you so much for letting me be here with you today to share this historic day. Thank you.